today we're going to be talking uh, about middle game plans and how to analyze a position from a static point of view. Uh, I'm sure you guys already heard about static and dynamic. Um, what is a good static position? When your opponent has no counterplay and basically when you can uh, improve your position uh, slowly. Yeah? Uh, what is a bad static position? It's basically when you're facing um, that type of advantage. Your opponent, your opponent is slowly, slowly building a uh, strategic advantage and you don't have a lot of things uh, to do. So what do, you, what do you need to usually uh, try to find whenever you're facing a bad static position? Counterplay, right? Okay, there are four criterias uh, when we're talking about uh, static assessment. Number one, what do you guys think we should look for? King safety. Yeah, number two, uh, material situation. That is pretty much uh, the second one. The third one is how, how will the position look like if we take the queens off the board? And the fourth one is pawn structure. So let's try to make the st static assessment of this position. It's black to move, by the way. Number one, king safety. Who's better? Pretty equal, I would say. Yeah. But can you take advantage of that? Not, yeah, not right now at least. So for the moment, um, the king safety is kind of equal. What about material? This is the easiest one. It's equal. Uh, how would the position be if we take the queens off the board? White is definitely better. Yes. So uh, we. W it's black to move, by the way. So uh, white would still be better because the fourth one, pawn structure, who's better? Debatable. I would say white is better because black has a clear weakness uh, that white is, is taking advantage right now of, and that is the weakness on d7, the backwards pawn on the d file. And he's just going to put his rook on the d file, and then you're going to have some, uh, some problems defending against that. Also. His pawn structure right now in the center, it kind of gives him a uh, space advantage. So statically, black is worse. Yeah. All right. So when we have, when we have those type of situations, obviously, we, we try to kind of um, find counterplay, destabilize the position a little bit. So what should we do now? What are some options of blacks in this position? Hmm? Rook takes e3. OK. And uh, this is exactly what black played in this position. Rook takes e3. All right, let's do the, the assessment now. King safety. Black is much better already, yeah? Uh, material situation, white is doing much better. Without the queens on the, on the board, white would be winning. And pawn structure, black is better, right? So we kind of equalized those advantages. And which one do you guys think is the most important of, these, of the advantage? King safety, yes, absolutely. So. Despite the fact that he gave, he gave an exchange, he got a lot of counterplay in return. What would you guys play? Queen e8. Hmm? Queen e8, absolutely. OK. Right. What are some, uh, s some ideas that, uh, that white could, could implement in this position? What should he play? Let's try to calculate a little bit. 
candidate moves. So, then, yeah, so we would king f2 or k3? That's one, absolutely. Uh, rook d3 is the second one. Can Anything I else? Yeah, that uh, that could definitely be uh, be an idea. Knight e5, rook takes e5. So if he goes king f2, knight e5, I would say uh, I would say queen e4 in this position is is a little bit better because we're trying to play rook e8. We're not really in a hurry to to take this e3 pawn. We're actually just trying to get our pieces out and. Um, and kind of attack the king that way, right? Also, with this queen e4, what else are we accomplishing? Hmm? Can this queen uh, go back to c2 and come back to the defense anymore? No. So you're kind of restricting your opponent's queen as well. Hmm? Restriction. And then we go to the second, uh, second lesson that we had together mastering the middle game uh, last week. Absolutely. So king f2 is not a good move. What else? What, could, what else could try, uh, white try? What about rook d3? Queen c2. Queen c2 is, is what he did in the game, but it's probably not the best move. He underestimated the fact that, um, that e3 pawn doesn't matter that much. That e3 pawn is actually very important because it protects the king. So you do have to fight for the defense of it. Uh, I think rook d3 would have been the best move in this position. Rook d3, and what should we do now? Knight e5, then rook d5, knight g4, and then what? Rook d3 back, and probably the best thing black can do as well is uh, is just accept the draw, yeah, the repetition with knight e5. So rook d3 would have definitely been the best move. White played queen c2. Queen takes e3 immediately, queen takes e3. It's, it's not just about the double pawn, but once again, it's, uh, it's about the safety of white's king, and it's definitely damaged after the loss of that pawn. King h1, continue. Mm, okay, rook e8. Maybe I'm going to take this pawn. No, I think now that we don't have to worry about... Uh, now we have to worry about the d7 pawn, so why not we just play knight e5, yeah? Normal move. Also, it kind of uh, solidifies this queen on e3. It cannot be attacked. This knight on e5 is like super, super strong. Rook f1. What now? Continue improving your position. If the knight is so strong, why can't he attack? Well, he can, but I mean... If, if he does, first of all, he's a pawn down, and uh, his structure is pretty bad. Why his structure is pretty bad? His king's safety is completely uh, ruined. So, I mean, black is almost winning, in my opinion, here. Uh, you're not really getting anything in return, right? So you kind of chose your destiny. Now you have to keep material as much as possible. So he played rook f1. Uh, black improved his position with rook e8, rook f4, what now? What is his threat? Mm -hmm. Rook e4, absolutely. Rook e4, maybe even queen e4, so what should uh, black do? Somebody else, not you. Hmm? Play solid chess, guys.
suggestions? Uh, Night G6 is interesting. The problem with Night G6, uh, I have a feeling you're kind of uh, getting a bit distracted. And this knight is very solid in the center right now. If you play Night G6, I'm going to go Rook F3. And it's, uh, it's, it's White who is starting to amass some sort of initiative right now. I'm not really sure what you're going to do, because you don't want to exchange the queens, at least not for the moment, not in this position. Because if you exchange, I take, take and uh, my rooks are very active, right? We could consider n exchange the queens, but we have to keep the rooks in check. Like if we allow the rooks to infiltrate, then we're going to be in trouble. That's when they are the strongest. Uh, and also, obviously, knight e5 uh, doesn't work because of rook d8, yeah? So, Knight g6, not the right move. Candidates. Knight g6 was one way to defend that knight, but there are plenty of other ways. Well, maybe not plenty. Yeah, f6, absolutely. Uh, we have to solidify that knight, right? So why don't we play f6? And uh, not only that it solidifies the knight, but it also maybe potentially in an endgame um, we will have space for our king to, to, to go closer to the center as fast as possible, right? Centralization of the, of the king, especially in the endgame, is, is of great importance. So f6 is a pretty good move, I think. Queen e4. And now a critical moment of the game. Let's try to, uh, to think about, once again, our candidate moves and see exactly what type of position we are looking to get and, uh, and calculate, obviously. Knight g4? Knight g4, interesting. Yeah, knight g4 is, uh, is an interesting move. Yeah, I will take, if you go knight g4, I will take your queen. Uh, you're going to have to take with the knight, knight takes c3, and then I'm going to play rook takes d7. Um, unfortunately, your rooks once again are getting active. Yeah, I don't want that. I don't want to allow that. If uh, if I enter an endgame, I want to keep your rooks closed. You know. Nobody's saying queen c1. Queen c1? Yeah, yeah queen c1. I mean, queen c1 is, <coughs> is, is definitely the first thing we need to, to look at, right? Because it's a check, at least. Um, right, so let's calculate a little bit queen c1. King g2. Do we have any continuation? <coughs> and does white have... Any threats? White is threatening rook d7, exactly. And uh, the queen going to c1, I feel that it actually improved uh, white's king's position. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the safety has increased a little bit. I mean, we can take this pawn, but then after rook takes d7, uh, once again, his rooks are getting active. We don't want to allow that. So queen c1 is the first thing we need to look f to look at. Uh, you, you, look, uh, you look at it a little bit, you see that you allow his queen to kind of remain central on e4 and kind of control the whole position. And uh, we understand that it's not a good move. Yes? Okay, knight g6. That's an interesting candidate. Could you elaborate on that? Uh, so, he takes queen 3 mm -hmm. g3. Mm-hmm. Well, his pawns are, his structure is definitely bad, yeah? Absolutely, so but. <coughs> can he take on d7? Well, he can, but he's going to lose his, his other rook, right? So you're kind of um, getting some speed in that position, in that end game. And you also infiltrate your, with your rook. In the same time, you're keeping his, rook in, his rooks in check. He doesn't really have a way to coordinate them. 
and create an attack against his king. So I think knight g6 is the right move. And that's exactly what he played, knight g6. Queen takes e3, rook takes e3. Okay, now he took on d7. Let's try to, he took, he took on d7 and he accepted a clearly worse endgame. Let's try to look at, uh, at other moves and see if they work or not. Try to assess the position in those cases. So what about rook f2? Rook f2, sure. I think you already kind of made a mistake after rook yeah, f2. Want you definitely, once again, you don't want to allow him yeah. to take on d7. I mean, there is absolutely no point in doing that. Why would you let his rook enter your position? I mean, I'm not saying you might still be better, but um, it's kind of pointless to do that. So we're going to play knight e5. Yeah, like <laughs> Very solid, you know, uh, slow, slow improvement of the position. This pawn is not running anywhere. We're going to take it anyway. We're going to take on c3, then take on c4, bring the king to the center, and the position is almost winning, right? So what about rook f3? Let's try to assess that position, because that's, I feel, the critical variation. Uh, rook, <clears throat> rook f3, rook e7, yeah, that's, that's, an interesting, that's an interesting line. But I think after rook f3, we have to kind of make a decision. If we play rook e7, um, we're going to have to admit that our rook is not going to get active anytime soon, yeah? If we take on e, on e2, the rook is going to be very free to, to, to create a lot of damage to white's position. Uh, but there's a continuation after rook e2 that I, I need you guys to a follow up. Rook e2, rook takes d7. Well, if you, it's a good question, yeah? So rook, rook, rook takes e2, rook takes d7, knight e5, rook e7. Rook e1 check, king g2, and then we just take the rook because our rook on e1 is protected, yeah? So after rook takes e7, knight e5, what do we accomplish with this move? So after this, after rook e7, once again, I'm going to show it for everybody to see. We had to give this check so, the, so that we put the rook on a defended square. Yeah? What if he goes rook d8? King f7, how is this position? <coughs> what did we accomplish by attacking those, that rook and forcing her to, to go to d8? He cannot take any pawns, and, and your king is free right now. Yeah? If, if, if the rook would have stayed on the seventh rank, then there would have been a lot of possibilities of connecting the rooks and maybe trying to checkmate you in a way, right? Uh, with the rook on the, on, on the eighth rank, that's not going to be possible anytime soon. And this is, if you look a little bit at the position, is completely winning for, for black for various reasons. He has to go on, he has to go on f1. We take on a, a2. How is his king? What's wrong with rook f4 there? In here? Yeah, you can play rook f4, no problem. Is is the same thing, I will still take this pawn. It just limits the knight a bit. I agree. The knight is going to stay here. Oh, okay. The knight is central, the knight has a very, very solid position. I don't want to move it anywhere. At least not for the moment, at least not if you try to, try to do something extraordinary. The problem is your rook is completely paralyzed. If it moves anywhere on h4, knight, knight f3 is coming and your king is almost checkmated. Yeah. So that's the problem. This knight keeps this rook in check. Sorry. <laughs> tea time. Tea time. It's my alarm for tea time. I don't know why. It's a, yeah. Anyway, black is completely winning, right? So seeing this whole, these variations in his set, why decided to just take on d7 and, uh, and try his luck in this endgame. But this is already lost, yeah? 
we how is how is the structure? It's equal pawns, but the structure is clearly in our favor. Yeah. What should we do now? Which pawn should we take? He decided to take the pawn on e2. And I think it's the right decision. Because um, if you allow these pawns to stay connected, they will be able to defend each other. Yeah? Uh, these two pawns are anyway very, very weak. So he decided to take this guy and then this guy. So rook takes e2, rook takes a7, rook f2, rook b7, rook takes c4, rook b3. What to do now? Hmm? Yeah, rook a4 could be an idea. Uh, but the rook, if we play rook a4, the problem is he's going to go rook b5. And at least right now, his rook is kind of getting a little bit more active. So always try to be super precise. The rook on c4 is keeping this rook stuck on b3, right? Why would we move it? He, he doesn't threaten to play a5. He's not threatening to put his rook behind his pawn and, and start pushing it. So he decided to just bring his king to the center, yeah? Usual, the usual thing you need to do in, in end games. King g2, g5, king f3. We bring the king to the center, rook a3, h5. Now we just push the pawns. Um, there's nothing really that white can do. Once again, his, his pieces are very, very passive. Yeah? And that's one of the most important things in rook endgames. Activity versus uh, passive pieces. Yeah? Try to have the active pieces all the time. Rook a6, king e5, a4, c4, rook c6, take. And I don't know why he's not resigning. He's a, he's a resilient man. Rook takes c4, rook b8, and the rook comes here. It's pretty obvious that the pawns are going to promote very, very quickly. OK, that was the first example. Let's see the second example, which is a little bit more difficult. You're going to be white. Give it some thought, because it's not easy at all. Once again, let's make the static assessment of the position. King safety. Equal, sure, yeah, around equal. Um, material? Hmm? Equal, yeah. How is the position without the queens on the board? Hmm? Who? Yeah. Black is definitely better. Yeah, black is definitely better because he has uh, the fourth, the fourth criteria, the pawn structure. Black is much better. Yeah. It's not necessarily about what happens immediately. From a static point of view, on the long run, you're going to be in big trouble because of your pawn structure. Because. Um, Maybe because of this square. Yeah, this knight can go to c4. Very nice. Once again, you have this backward pawn. Quite a liability in this position. Yeah? So we're not doing very well from a static point of view. We have to kind of change the dynamics of the position, the character of the position. So try give it a give it some thought. Uh, a few minutes, maybe one, two minutes. Give me some candidate moves, and we'll we'll start analyzing them. Somebody said something else. Yes, c4, and that kind of makes sense, right? C4, bishop c1, queen takes c1. Once again, let's make the static assessment of the position. King safety. 
Who's ahead? White. White is ahead because right now this queen is coming to h6. What are you lacking with black? Your dark square bishop, yeah? You have, you have some, uh, some big problems because of that. And potentially, if this pawn goes to d5, this bishop will open up. And then once again, you're going to, your king is going to feel very, very uh, bad. He's, he's going to be in big danger. So that's clearly in white's favor. Material? Black, Black obviously. Without the queens? How's the position without the queens? Black. Black is definitely much better. And the pawn structure? Hmm? Black is better. But, so that's three advantages to one, right? Uh, white's, white is still not doing very well. But which one was the most important of the advantages? King safety, right? And that's in white's, uh, that's in white's favor. So, yeah, I, I, maybe the computer will find a defense, but practically, from a human perspective, it's very, very difficult to play this position as black. Um, and everything else, white would have been completely lost from a strategic point of view. So when you have that choice uh, to make, don't choose a passive position uh, just because it might last longer. Yeah, Choose, uh, choose the active uh, filled with counterplay option. Yeah, So he played king g7. That's, that's where you, uh, you forget about certain things. If you play queen g6, uh, queen g5, knight c4 would be an option. But even <coughs> stronger than that would be to play f6 in this position. Because this is not a weakness. This is actually an improvement of black's position. You cannot take advantage of the light squares that have just been weakened. And, and in fact, I'm actually strengthening all of the dark squares around my king with this move, simple move f6, especially keeping this square. Your knights are never going to be able to jump there. Uh, and also, right now, even if you manage to like somehow open the position with d5, your bishop is not going to be that strong, right? Because he's blocked by the f6 pawn. So queen g5 actually helps black. It's, it looks appealing. It definitely looks like you're getting closer to the king. But once you realize that f6 is not really a weakness for him, um, it, it just becomes clear that queen g5 is not the right move. Something else. That's not the piece that we want to improve. Knight c3. Interesting. Um, knight c3, I'm going to take on c4. I think I'm going to take with the queen because I want to create some, uh, some attack on this side. Right, but okay, let's say you play bishop g2, right? Or something like that. But the position changed. You, you exchange one of your main attackers, that, knight, that central knight on e4. Uh, and in, in, in return, you actually centralize my queen. We exchanged a few pieces, which clearly favors black. So once we sacrifice, once we choose the path of, of counterplay, we cannot really look back and try to play safe moves. You know, you have to always go for the initiative. You have to kind of Im improve your pieces in a decisive way. You know, you, 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 cannot, you cannot give your opponent any breathing time. So knight c3 would be, would be a bad decision. The knight on e4 is, is central. He's, he has the potential of helping the attack. We don't want to move it back. Let's try to go to improve, to improve our pieces uh, in order to take advantage of his holes in the position, his uh, weaknesses in the position. Rook e3. Rook e3. Wow. 
That's an interesting one. I will. I think I might be able to take it. <laughs> why? Why? why are you, no, but it's 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 a serious question. Actually, it's, I'm not sure if I want to take it because then he's going to open up uh, with D5. So, but I cannot say no to material. I'm going to take it. <laughs> I cannot say no. I'm a greedy grandmaster, as as they usually come. Take with what? Now I, I'm going to. I, I think I'm going to take this guy as well, or maybe I should. No, 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 no. Right now I'm going to take this uh, this knight definitely. I'm simplifying the position. And I have a lot of material advantage. So if you don't checkmate me right now, it's already a bit too much. Yeah, you gave a bit too much material. Um, so rookie, also rookie three doesn't really create an immediate plan, and it also obstructs your queen. Yeah, you want this diagonal ready for the queen to jump into the attack. H four, let's go. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Uh, H4, I would take on C4 once again. <laughs> I mean, no, I, H4 is, is a very common way of actually kind of uh, pretending you are doing something. But in fact, you're not doing anything. So <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, depending on your opponent, they might be getting scared. But I'm not going to get scared. I'm going to take on c4, and I think you're having some problems now. Um, h4, not fast enough. What's the idea? Knight e5. Knight e5 is an interesting move, but you have to tell me the idea. Hmm? It's running yes, yes. Knight e5 has a clear attacking idea. Not only that you centralize your knight, but you're also getting ready to go to g4 and then bring your queen into the attack. Yeah? So, I mean, this should be your first instinct just because it centralizes the knight. And just because you see that that knight is not really doing much on f3 at the moment. Um, so try to redirect your weaker pieces, your pieces that can be improved. I think uh, this is a rule coined by some, uh, some Russian grandmaster with a difficult name to pronounce. I don't remember his name. Just take my word for it, I guess. So 95. What should black do? What if he takes on c4? Let's calculate. Let's calculate this. Hmm? It's, it's defended every time you go. So right, but it, no, it was defended also in the previous twice, variation. Yeah, before you move the nine. So it's just three times now. Right. But when the thing is that I want to take advantage of the pin, right? So it doesn't matter how many times the, the knight is defended. After you take, I'm going to play b5. And now you cannot move that piece because you would lose your queen. Um, but maybe we have some extra options now. What could those be? Let's go. Let's calculate a little bit. Yeah, knight g4. Continue with our plan. Attacking queen h6, right? So let's, let's take this piece away, queen h6. King g8 or king h8, I don't know if it matters. Knight g5. Uh, this, the, the pieces are starting to become extremely, extremely dominant on the king side. Um, I think it's just checkmate in, in, in the next two moves. Yeah, uh, there is absolutely no defense. Um, this, this kind of setup against the king without, without the dark square bishop is extremely, extremely dangerous. OK? So that's, uh, that's another reason why knight e5 is good, because knight takes c4 simply is eliminated. It's out of the question. So what should black do? Three, 
what if I tell you black is might actually be better in this yeah. position? No, I, Black did resign in just a few moves, but uh, here he's still having the grip over over the position, but he has to be very careful. H5 is an interesting move, but that weakens weakens your position a lot, so I might be able. Okay, now I'm just going to put my queen here. F6 doesn't work anymore because one of the consequences of you playing h5 is that you don't defend the g6 pawn anymore. So now after f6, I just simply can take. Um, the thing with queen g5 is, is I simply just want to take my queen out of the pin, out of the c file and force you to move this knight. Because that's the next step of, uh, of me building an attack. I need to open up this bishop. So um, after queen g5, knight f6, I'm going to go d5. And I think, I think the position is starting to look very, very uncomfortable for you. You're still having some material advantage, but what can you play? What would you play with black? Just try to continue the game a little bit. Let's say you go, okay, king g8, get out of, your, of, the, of the diagonal, of the long diagonal. Knight takes g6, exactly. F takes g6, now you see once again, the, pawn, the, the lack of the pawn on h7 is, is, is very, very uh, important. Queen takes h queen h7 checkmate next move. Because of the pin on the knight, the knight cannot really def defend the h7 pawn, uh, the h7 uh, square. So h5 is uh, probably not a good move. Something else. I think I've heard it already. F6, absolutely, absolutely. F6 would have been uh, the best move in the position. Knight g4. And now what? I think there's only, there might be only one move in this position. F5? That's a terrible move. Uh, I mean, <laughs> come on, F5, F5 you're, you're doing what you don't want to do. You, you're weakening the dark squares. Why are you going uh, like peace hunting? I mean, I, I'm going to go peace hunting. I'm going to go for your king now. And you're going to resign very fast. <laughs> I mean, you already have material advantage. Your only concern should be your king, right? As long as you manage to, to, to get that king uh, to safety, I, I mean, you're going to be winning. But it's not that easy. Getting that king uh, to safety is definitely not that easy. Let's calculate knight takes c4. Absolutely. Let's calculate knight takes c4. So you, still have the pin on. you still have the pin, but the same problem remains. Queen h6 check, intermediate check, and then my bishop escapes. Yeah. And then you're, uh, you're down material. You're, you're having some serious problems. So keep that idea in mind, but tune it up a little bit. Make it work. I will still go queen h6. The problem is that you're leaving this pawn behind. And I don't know if e8 is safety. I don't think it is, because my, my pieces are still uh, clog, clogged up against your, against your king. So king f7 is an interesting try, but once again, not the precise move. Pg8. 
King G8. So one thing we do uh, when we have this type of super dynamic, super uh, super precise position, look at the most obvious continuation, and if that doesn't work, try to change the move order. Yeah, and that's what that's exactly what Black does. King G8. Um, does Queen H6 work? It doesn't look like it's working that well anymore because now you can take the knight on c4, mm -hmm. right? Now the pawn is not uh, is not protected, so this is a very very complicated positions uh, position. There are some a lot of a lot of uh, complications. Black is probably slightly better, but from a practical po point of view, white still has a lot of chances of of delivering that. Uh, that uh, mating attack. So f6 would definitely have been the best move for black in this position. He played knight to f6. What to do? Which one? Absolutely. d5. Immediately d5. And um, I'm not really sure what black missed in this position. Allowing me to open up my last my last attacker, this super strong bishop on g2, uh, is simply a deadly mistake. h5. I think we already had this position on the board, right? Coming from h5. Queen g5 was probably good enough. He played queen f4, the same idea. Yeah, just attacking that, attacking that knight on f6. King h7. What now? Try to calculate till the end. It's not such an easy variation. The variation is about five moves deep, maybe? Something like that. So. I'll give you the first one. I think simply taking on f7, f6 is OK. So we took on f6. What now? Let's, uh, let's calculate that. 97 is an interesting, it's an interesting attempt. Does it work? So knight d7. He's going to take that knight. That's the critical continuation. Always, always check uh, your opponents taking the material. Knight d7, queen takes d7, queen takes f6, rook goes to g8. Rookie seven is one way, absolutely. But black still survives a little bit after that. You have one move that finishes the game on the spot. Because after rookie, rook, rookie seven, I'm going to take on e7, queen takes e7. And uh, I have two, two rooks. You're definitely winning because of the attack on, on the long diagonal. And my pieces are very uncoordinated. Uh, but you have a much more precise move. Let's see. Rook e7 is definitely, is definitely winning on the spot. Yeah, well you're saying there's a KO. I think so. I think there is a KO. There's a KO over there. Rook to e7, yeah, yeah, rook to e7 is, is the main one, but there's another one. Probably there are more than one. Try to be a bit creative, maybe. <laughs> Try to be creative. Okay. Who said that? Rook to e5. What's the hidden threat of rook e5? B6. 
bishop d3 yeah. and then rook h5 checkmate yeah and uh, he simply doesn't <coughs> have he simply doesn't have a way to defend against it um, if he plays something like rook e8 we can actually go rook takes h5 directly bishop d3 now only move rook d6 and the rook is pinned queen d7 queen g7 checkmate pretty easy okay so in middle game positions guys well whenever you don't know what to choose from whenever you think uh, it, the position is very very unbalanced try to make this static assessment um, and, and and see exactly where you stand see if you need to change the character of the position right if you're worst from a static uh, static point of view then you have to look for imbalances, right? You have to change the pawn structure. You have to get to the king, right? Um, imbalances, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, the word that you're looking for whenever you're worse from a static point of view. Whenever you're better, you try to avoid those uh, at all costs, right? 